A forgotten artifact lies in pieces on a planet far from Earth. Few know it exists except those who took it back and those whose ancestors created it. Four young people are thrown into a race against emissaries of the gods to find its pieces. Mistrust, greed, and magic are tangled in an endless web. What will the fate be of the universe once it is found and reassembled? Get Scepter of the Gods, The Rod of Truth now on Amazon and get wrapped up in the saga that will not let you go. Good morning, and welcome to the Motivational Devotion, where we are merging motivation and spirituality to create a daily dose of confident positivity. I hope that this morning's podcast will help you to be more spiritually and positively motivated so that you can transform your day. You may be familiar with the Broadway musical, Joseph and the Coat of Many Colors. It's a telling of the story of Joseph from the Hebrew Bible. He had several older brothers and one younger brother and was constantly ridiculed because he was his father's favorite son. His father gave him a fabulous coat that was said to have many colors in it. Today we would think, no big deal. But in those days, everything was woven by hand and to have anything consisting of a lot of different colors would have been an expensive and rare item. His brothers were jealous of him and that was the last thing they were willing to take and they came up with a plan. They all jumped on him, took his fancy coat, tossed him into a pit, and then went home to tell their father that wild beasts had attacked Joseph, and all they could find was the coat. They meant to just teach their brother a lesson and leave him in the pit for a while, to hopefully take him down a few notches so that he wouldn't be so cocky. But they went back to get him and found no one there. While the brothers were playing their little gag, slave traders came along and found Joseph in the pit, pulled him out, but not rescuing him, and took him to Egypt, where they sold him. Joseph went from one mishap to another, not because he did anything wrong, but because he always made the right choice. That's one reason why I appreciate this story so much. People mistakenly think that a person experiencing a run of bad luck must be making poor choices, but that's not always the case. One of Joseph's masters was out of the house, and his wife made a pass at Joseph, hoping for some Well, you know, Joseph refused because he was loyal to his master, but when the master came home, the wife told him that Joseph had attacked and molested her. Joseph was thrown into prison for doing the right thing. I used this story many years ago when I directed a summer church camp, and on the last full day of camp, the plan was to give them an experience of making good choices or poor choices. Like a lot of summer camps, everyone had their own small group that they met with a couple times a day, and so I had them make their choices as a group. They weren't allowed to finalize their choice until everyone was completely, 100% in agreement that that was their choice. This was the fourth day of being immersed in the story of Joseph, and they had all heard and discussed the stories of how Joseph ended up in prison, and so they had an understanding of why they were doing this exercise. They all started a different station and would go to another station based on the decisions they would make. If they made good enough decisions, they would end up at the white gathering circle in the middle of camp. If they made mostly poor decisions, they would end up at the camp's septic pond. Not in it, mind you, just next to it. That experience was bad enough. One of the main points to this course was that at any of the five stations, the group could make a positive choice and still end up where they wanted to be. It was never too late to make a good choice, and it was not possible to make just one bad choice and end up at the sewer. They had to make 100% bad choices to not end up where they wanted to be. Granted, in real life, you can make a bad choice, a really bad choice early in life, and it will make most of the rest of your life hard, if not nearly impossible. However, no choice we ever make can completely prevent us from making another good choice afterward, with only very few exceptions. There are some choices that have permanent results, but only some, and the vast majority of us, won't make one of those. We need to always remember that we will screw up. It's a given. Sometimes I've screwed up by forgetting to buy something on the shopping list. No biggie, just go back. Sometimes I've screwed up kind of big time, and let other people down, made other things more difficult, or just looked stupid. 
But a lot of the time, the bigger issue is what we don't choose. You can make a bad choice, but whatever we choose, we are just doing the best we can with who we are at the time and what we can see. At the same time, we can choose to not make a whole ton of bad choices and make a decision with what is left. What you don't choose can be far more important than what you do choose. Those things can be what define our lives. An important thing I've learned along my journey is that there are good ideas and then there are God ideas. An idea of being great for someone else is not necessarily one that is great for me. Other people will often say to me, Hey, you know what you should do? You ought to... And then they proceed to tell me, and I will listen politely. Sometimes I listen with great interest. Sometimes, although they don't know it, they are being messengers of the universe, and what they say is right in sync with what has been bouncing around in my mind, and they are 100% correct. That is what I should do. The vast majority of the time, though, I thank them and tell them I will keep it in mind. I do. But you can't possibly do every single thing that everyone brings to you as something that they think that you ought to do. You'd never get the first thing done toward your own lifelong dream. All those things that you choose to not do would just be distractions keeping you from your life. When it comes to most possibilities, if it didn't erupt out of your own lifelong dream and your brainstorming, it's usually best to just say no. The definition of our lives may just as much be that long list of unchosen ideas as it is a shorter list of things in our laser-focused, relentless pursuit of the dream. By defining all that we are not, we come that much closer to being true to who we are created to be. And that is when we know that all of creation is conspiring in our favor. Always trust that the universe always has your back. Steve Jobs, founder of Apple, once said, I'm as proud of what we don't do as I am of what we do. Thank you for taking the time to listen today. Please help keep this podcast going by following the Motivational Devotional Facebook page, following at Threefold Way Radio on Twitter, and sharing the written format of today's message from motivational-devotional.com on your social media. I am deeply grateful for your support and thank you for letting Motivational Devotional be part of your journey. Peace out. See you tomorrow. Motivational Devotional is a production of Threefold Way Radio, LLC.